If you're building a camper van electrical system and running heavy gauge wire to your batteries or inverter, then crimping lugs is one of those things that you have to get right. Do it wrong and you'll end up with weak connections, voltage drop, or worse, heat and failures later down the road. In this video, I'll show you how to get a solid professional crimp on those heavy duty lugs. We'll talk tools, technique, testing, and in the end, I'll cut one open to show you what a good crimp looks like on the inside. Let's talk tools. I use a lug crimper like this one. I like this one because it's easy to adjust for different wire sizes and get consistent results with. The other common type of lug crimper is a hydraulic one, which would look like this. This one is a die style crimper, and this one is an indent style. What I mean by die style is to adjust for different wire sizes using this one, you put a different set of dies in between the jaws here. Each set of dies corresponds to a specific wire size. This one works a little different. Instead, it makes a big indentation in the bottom of the lug. So to adjust for different wire sizes, all you do is twist here to set the thickness according to the scale on the crimper. There are cheaper options like hammer crimpers, but I'll be honest, I've never used that type. They can work, but my impression of them is that they don't always give as consistent as results because it's harder to control the pressure that you're applying to that lug. If you've used a hammer style crimper and had good luck, drop a comment below. I'd be interested to hear. But for me, this one's my go-to. Given the importance of making good connections on these large wires in your electrical system, I think it makes sense to buy the tool that you can trust for the job. Let's take a look at how to do it. It starts by stripping the end of our wire so that we can slide the lug over the end. I like to use my large wire cutters for this. And what I do is put them around the wire and apply gentle pressure. I'm trying to cut through just the insulation but not the copper strands at the center themselves. Once I've twisted it around a few times, you can see we've got a pretty good cut going and now we can bend it and break that insulation away. And then give it a big pull. And there we've got the wire stripped. The lug then slides on and we wanna make sure that all of the copper strands go inside and that none of them end up astray. This is 4 aught AWG wire, by the way. I clamped my crimping tool down to the workbench, and now I'll adjust it to the right size. Now we can open the arms of the crimper and slide the wire and lug in, with the bottom side of the lug facing the indenter. Now we'll simply close the arms of the crimper fully. When we pull it out, it looks like this. Once it's crimped, take a look at it. You know, just visually inspect it and see if it looks like you have a full crimp. Also, give it a pull. You know, tug on it as hard as you can, bend the wires a little bit, and see if you see any of the wire moving, if you really try to pull it out of the way. It's normal to see the insulation move a little bit, but you shouldn't see any movement between the copper strands and the lug itself. Normally, the next step would be to cover it with a bit of heat shrink to keep it protected and to keep this section of the lug insulated, but instead, let's cut this one open and see what it looks like on the inside. To do this, I'm going to slice through it using a metal cutting bandsaw. See how the copper is cold welded together? There's no air gap in there and no loose strands. That's what we want. All those individual copper strands are now one solid mass of copper inside the lug, a rock solid and low resistance connection. After crimping it, always seal it up. I use adhesive lined heat shrink to keep out moisture and corrosion. And that's about it for making solid connections on these large wires. But here's a couple more tips before we go. Use a tinned copper lug instead of a bare copper lug for a little bit extra corrosion resistance. You'll notice over time these start to oxidize a little bit and you don't see that with the tinned ones. Also, make sure your lug size matches not just the wire size, but also the bolt size as to what it's going to. Mismatched lug and bolt sizes won't give as good of a connection because you won't have as much surface area between the mating surfaces. 
Well, I hope that helps you get better, safer results in your camper build. If you want more DIY camper van tips and tutorials, hit subscribe. I've got videos on electric systems, cabinetry, insulation, the whole build process. If you ever want one-on-one -on -one help, I offer consultation calls. Link down below. All right, see you in the next one.